Year year, you should think twice by publishing yourself in underwear. Grandma, beautiful curves, baby, goddess. Even your shadow is beautiful. Anyone else notice her manny? Ouch. Have a little self-respect and sense of decency. Hello, welcome back to my channel where I teach you how to be beautiful from the inside out. I am passionate about influencing positive change into the world, be the change myself, and I hope I could teach you something today. If there is something that sparks your interest, make sure to comment that down below, like my video, subscribe if you want to learn more, and follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Is social media really the cause of rising depression? in the USA. According to Mental Health America, well, there is a significant increase of depression being caused from the ages of 12 to 17 in the USA that goes along with also the rising of social media. Not only is it rising for kids and teens and preteens, we also have people that are ages 65 plus that have an increase in depression. It's not as much obviously as it has impacted the younger crowd, but it's still significant considering that most 65 year olds, normally the 65 year olds I would come across don't know how to open TikTok or send or, you know, it's just very complicated because it's very foreign to people that are that age. And it's interesting how depression is still like rising with people that age. So does it really have a correlation? There are more cases of depression and cases of anxiety and one can't help but blame social media for it. I'm sure you've heard it around. I'm sure it's very common. Yeah, kids have anxiety nowadays. Kids have more depression. Social media is bad for you. Social media is causing zombies. Social media is et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Fill in the blank. When scientists try to research this, it's very complicated to try to research something that has so many factors into the equation. You have how much time are you spending on social media? What are you watching on social media? Who are you watching on social media? Who are you following on social media? Ugh, hours of the day on social media. You also have psychological variables like isolation, anxiety, peer pressure, smartphone dependency, stress, despair, low self-esteem, and negative life circumstances. Loneliness, anxiety, peer influence, stress, depression, self-esteem, and environment are all correlated when it comes to researching this topic. That's a lot of things and a lot of factors to add up and try to research so many different different age groups there is literally a 12 year old is not looking at the hopefully not looking and researching the same thing that a 35 year old is and so on and obviously kids have less of an understanding of the impact of certain types of things and don't have the mental capacity to understand as an adult would but there's also adults out there that don't comprehend life the same way that other 35 year olds would as vice versa age is nothing but a number but usually that's the case not to mention that you have to factor in the fact that we do not value sleep as a western society at least most of us don't we don't know how important sleep is to our mental health is to our healing it is for our digestion our regeneration of cells our energy our overall well-being getting a good night's sleep is also linked to helping people with alzheimer's it's supposed to regenerate the brain so with that being said get your sleep cell phones il uh, illuminate blue light which i am so terrible at wearing my glasses for blue light because i lost them and i have not cared to find a new one and i have been having trouble falling asleep at night because i tend to be on my cell phone i am guilty at night or watch tv or be on my computer editing late at night by the time that it comes for me to go to sleep i have no melatonin 
released because I've been looking at a screen that affects your melatonin release in order for you to probably get a good night's sleep and also lack of sunlight. We as a society tend to spend a lot of time in our offices. We're told by dermatologists and doctors, don't be out in the sun because you're going to get skin cancer. Yet they don't tell you that the fabric softener and detergent that you're using has so many disgusting chemicals that affect your skin in a negative way and people are dying of cancer. But no, yeah, blame the sun that's been out there and it's natural for our skin. But whatever, you have to properly accumulate your vitamin D in order for your brain to properly produce melatonin and then avoid blue light from like six o'clock or for like four hours before you go to sleep and then your melatonin is released naturally and then you could go to sleep. So that is a big cause of depression as well and it's a factor because we're not getting proper sleep. So that affects our daily life. It affects how we function in the day and an accumulative time and will eventually affect your mental health. On the other hand, I always like to mention that there's good and positive to every situation. Every single situation, there's always a positive side and a negative side. It's just, do you see the cup as half full or as half empty? The good thing about social media is how connected we can be to each other. Some people even pay their bills making content, which is something that I hope to do in the future. Hopefully, you get to talk to people, you get to talk to family, family gets to see your pictures, friends that you haven't seen in a long time get to see you, close friends from your past, you get to meet new people on social media, talk to people. So the connection and society and community that we create within our social media realm is actually very important. And depression, there's a study and a podcast that I listened to. I'm going to try to find it so I can link it down below along with the other sources that I'm going to put down below. There's a study that has been done for 80 years with over 2,000 people now. They have followed people from the ages of their teens to like 90 years now I think they have a subject and something very important that they found in their studies is that unhappiness I think that that's essentially what they're researching like what is it that makes people happy is it financial gain is it economy of course everything has like a factor and nothing is black and white everything is gray but the average people the most important thing is connecting with other people and creating a sense of community and having someone to rely on for example they asked a question and they asked if you wake up in the middle of the night and you are having a terrible time and you're having an anxiety attack or something really serious just happened and you need someone to talk to do you have someone that you can call and that question most people that answered no tended to find that their life had more unhappiness and they were more prone to other things and mental health issues versus people who had someone and just to throw something in there most people that didn't have anybody to talk to were married people and of course other people but it's very interesting that as a married couple i find that people can forget to pay attention to other people other than their spouse and i get that it's super hard to make time for a community when you are married and probably have kids and have to do so much around the house we get lost in the chaos of it all but if you're married and you have no friends i suggest you go out and find yourself some create a community go find hobbies make a life out of your partnership because it is very important even though it's also important to have this partnership in order to i don't know always have somebody there i guess and have somebody accountable i just wanted to say that because i thought it was really interesting and i do tend to find it hard that when people get into relationships they kind of just forget about the world and everybody else except for this one person and then all of a sudden this is the only person that you talk to so to continue that was a tangent can we really blame social media and platforms for our depression or is it our inability to properly disconnect from platforms that are formulated for you to continue using them can we really blame these advertising and these companies that are money hungry and essentially also have a story behind the people who made them and why they made them and the fact that they need to pay their bills as well? Can we really blame them for our inability to properly care for our mental health? In my opinion, I don't think that it's fair to blame social media for all of our problems because essentially social media is just a platform at the end of the day. Nobody held a gun to my 
head and told me to download it. Nobody held a gun to my head and told me to be on TikTok for eight hours straight. Nobody did that. I did that on my own and I probably had a great time doing it, which I did. I felt like crap after. Yeah, I felt a little depressed after. But you know what? I did it. It happened. It was me. So can I really blame social media for that? I don't think we can. What researchers have found in this area is that mindfulness while using the platform is needed in order not to fall into the trap of living life through your screen. Relying on a screen for dopamine, happiness, can cause detrimental effects on your mental health in the long run. If you rely on only solely your screen and stuff to like make you happy and you're endlessly like scrolling, you're gonna find yourself always wanting to scroll, always wanting to be on your phone, always wanting to just be behind the screen. We have to take our power back from that and realize that nobody's making you do that. Nobody asked you to, you know what I mean? Like nobody told you to do that. And you have to realize that these things and our actions have an effect on us. Is that effect gonna be a positive one or a negative one? That is all in your hands. That is all in your power. You have the power to do that. I took my into my own hands and after that time that i literally scrolled through tiktok for eight hours i'm not even kidding you guys like i literally scrolled through tiktok for eight hours it happened multiple times it wasn't like one time it happened multiple times where i literally woke up and i just i didn't have anything to do that day and i just scrolled and all of a sudden it was eight o'clock ten o'clock and i'm like oh my god have i even gone to the bathroom like what is going on so i took it upon myself to quite literally delete the app and for a really long time people were like oh did you see the tiktok and i'm like no i'm not allowed to have a tiktok and people are over here like really confused they're like do her parents like not let her have a tiktok like she's in her late 20s like what is going on and i'm just like no man i just can't handle it like i lose myself in the platform and sometimes i even find myself today going through instagram reels like i'll scroll for like two hours <laughs> it's really embarrassing <laughs> I try not to do it often, which I don't, but I, it's like, honestly, at this point, I've just counted it like TV time. I just, I just, I'm just watching some TV. Leave me alone. Okay. No, no. But I did take it upon myself to realize that I was, this is not good for me. Constantly scrolling through a screen and just like mindlessly, like, like I could have read, I don't know how many pages in that time to be real with you and that's an addiction that's what it is that's a straight up addiction addiction comes in so many shapes sizes forms and we normalize some addictions nowadays so we don't even realize that they're addictions aka food work exercise and the list goes on addictions are hard to accept there's a reason that <laughs> step one is denial denial you are in denial i could stop whenever i want right you could stop whenever you want yeah for sure i've been there i've done it i've been addicted to almost everything for real. i've been addicted to a lot of things and i didn't let myself watch tv for a really long time i canceled everything i canceled myself from smoking ganja i had to get off the vape the stupid vapes that they sell nowadays those things are cancer in a stick and addicting as hell food i was addicted to food emotionally ate all the time all the time there's a lot of addictions that i've come to accept that i had and i will always be addicted to them it is much easier to be addicted to something if, if the people that you surround yourself with are addicted to that thing it literally has become normal to pull out your phone while waiting in line sitting on the toilet sitting on the toilet at a red light i personally cannot stand in line anymore without really doing anything i try to sometimes i just stand there and i breathe and i focus on my breath because that's what people did back then you know it's like much healthier you're in your you're just like oh, giving your brain a breast we're constantly doing something with our damn brain it's like just chill you don't need to be doing something a lot of the time and by the way addiction is a sign of an imbalanced chakra i'm gonna place it up there I forgot which corner it was, so don't mind my pointing. I did a video on sacral chakra and I hope one day to speak on my experience on how I balanced it because I am still working on myself and I'm a lot closer to recalibrating and being the best version of myself. But at the moment, like sometimes I do some things and I'm like, oh my God, uh, wow, what was that? That was weird. I also would like to point out that when we post on social media, most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, we are posting something positive about our life. And so our social media is just like a mirage and it's off. I'm not gonna say fake, 
fake because it's not fake it's my life but at the same time we're posting the best version of ourselves, the highlights of my life and oh my god i'm traveling oh my god i did this oh my god look at me look at my outfit i always look like this i'm picture perfect and i realized that also that i did that because i try to be as brutally honest with everybody as i possibly can because i think it's so important for everybody to realize that the grass is not always damn green dog like the grass sometimes is gonna rot you're gonna have to pick it up and shave it and like it's gonna have to regrow and then it, maybe it'll be green one day but it's not always green it's not always gonna be perfect crap happens it's life i recently went to colombia and i'm grateful i got to visit but i would probably never go back unless i'm going to visit the techno the techno club that i loved because i had a blast and i loved everybody in there i made three friends or four friends i danced with people it was amazing community i felt like i was at home but every time i was on their beach on the colombian beach i wished to be back at my own beach in miami beach because i hated how persistent the locals can be i couldn't read i couldn't meditate on the beach i was constantly being bombarded by items for sale and it seems obvious to me not to post that part of my trip like why 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 am i gonna post about that it just seems a little like there's no point for that negativity like screw it it's in colombia like you're in colombia you ungrateful little girl like what the hell but like everybody that talked to me was like oh my god buy your pictures it looked like you had so much fun in colombia like this is not and i'm just like damn like i am one of those people i'm one of them we're all one of them of course we are who's gonna want to post about negative crap nobody i, I don't want to post that it's ridiculous so then that comes in with like people comparing themselves and you're comparing yourself to literally an illusion it's an illusion instagram is an illusion and an edited version of somebody else's life is it really up to the person who posted a picture or a video or something to inform you the viewer other problems as well as their good experiences or is it up to the user to realize that you're on social media and you shouldn't compare yourself to a perfectly curated version of someone's online Online presence doesn't that come down to ourselves being responsible for our thoughts and our feelings if someone's post makes you feel bad about yourself isn't that a sign that there are areas in your own life you can work on and you as a person should be able to accept and research why you felt that way and why that post caused x y and z feeling i guess what i'm saying is that we take social media so seriously while yes it is a variable in our lives that can easily depress someone and cause anxiety it isn't the platform itself that is doing that it is your inability to be self-aware enough to recognize how the pages and contents that you are choosing to follow make you feel so in my opinion if you're constantly obsessing over pictures and her body and how her butt looked and how her pose looked and how like their relationship and they seem so happy because they're always posting and look he always likes her pictures oh my god look at his comment on her photo it's so cute you do not know what happens behind closed doors you do not know what is going on behind the screen you do not know what is going on and it's not to say that that that's a negative thing it's not a negative thing i think everybody's life should be private everybody is entitled to their own secrets and their skeletons in their closet anybody is entitled it is up to us to realize that that's not essentially all true we're not getting the full picture i think that social media has a detrimental effect on society because we are constantly comparing ourselves to other people and it is shown in research that people who compare themselves often tend to fall into this negative state and then you start feeling bad about yourself why does in my body look like that why isn't my life like that why don't i travel like that why don't i have that type of money you have to stop taking pity on yourself uh, just unfollow it just stop following it honestly just take it off don't look at it don't follow it why are you gonna put yourself through that mental state of being if you're not ready to acknowledge that you can be there too because we are all abundant and you can have that as well so my question is how are we to expect children to make the observations that i just stated right now 
if most adults in their waking life don't even realize what is going on within their mental state as a person as a human being i am not a parent so i feel like what i'm going to talk about maybe i shouldn't be speaking about it because i'm not a parent so how would i know but i think it's the parent's job to raise the child to learn to love themselves and explore their hobbies and be taught that life isn't always what they see on social media i think that it's a very dangerous line that we're on a tightrope and we're like trying to balance it's up to us to teach the children and the generation below us that social media can be used for good when they're little so that they take that on and put that tool in their back pocket and grow with it and it'll evolve as it'll evolve but if we take and we let kids use social media and like not realize that the detrimental harm that it's causing on their mental health not checking in with their child and not knowing what they're doing and how they feel and and if are they comparing themselves or, or do how do they feel are they being bullied are they talk who are they talking to they could be also talking to like bad people that are into little kids and it, that's a whole nother subject like we just have to be more present in the our kids life it may be annoying in the moment to them and you might not want to be annoying but you're not there to be their friends you're there to guide them and eventually when they grow older they're gonna come to understand oh that's why mom did this i'm so happy my mom or dad did this i'm so happy my guardian took care of this because i was really going down that road or damn it sucks so and so is going through this but i was taught that you know what i mean and then we're leaving leaving it up to them to heal themselves when they're older from trauma that could have been completely avoided if you had the knowledge to figure out all this that i'm talking about essentially there's a reason that kids from 12 to 17 have a higher rate of depression and it's solely because they don't have the mental capacity to navigate the world alone that is why as a parent i urge you to inform your kids about the developing mind and how it works so that we can lead the future into the right direction the generation below us is our future but right now we're the ones leading the ship there is no clear-cut black and white answer or any one research out there that's going to tell you you should have x amount of hours on social media you should do this it, there's no textbook for it and let's be super super real and honest who the hell is gonna want to be told how many how much hours we could spend on social media or what we could do with our lives nobody wants to be told that you should be able to navigate life without having to be told things and do the right thing and do the hard thing sometimes for yourself for the better of your mental health for the better of society and to just have a more peaceful freaking existence and god there's just so much hate out there if you scroll through the comments it's just like disgusting hurt people hurt people it's true i've just seen so many people hiding behind a screen and like putting people down putting youtubers down putting models down trying to put stars down like i just don't understand why people have this need i do understand why people have it but I just don't understand why with all the research out there, they have not yet come to realize that they're trying to put people down because they don't feel that great about themselves. And that sucks. That's what, that's the people that I'm trying to reach. You are the people that I'm trying to reach because you are so much better than that. We as human beings have such a beautiful brain and you are so much better than that. So if you're going to put a negative comment on something, really try to observe like, oh, why? Why? Why am I trying to make this person feel bad? Like, for what? What are you to gain about it? Hurting somebody's feelings? Weird. And the question also lies on like, do you love yourself enough? Essentially is what it boils down to, to make these changes for yourself, to feed yourself better. And that comes along with feeding yourself good content, feeding yourself positive things, things that are you constantly listening to, things that you're constantly watching. Is it good? Realize the effect that it has afterwards, the effect that it has on your life and the actions that come out of it. Is it negative or is it positive? Is it doing good? Is it making your grass greener? Are you watering your own grass? Do you love yourself to water your own grass and do what is possible and do what is necessary for you? Not everything that is good for you feels good for you in the moment. Afterwards, it should always have a, a nice nice accomplished feeling after you do something that like was hard 
So do you think that anxiety and depression of the world isn't a big deal? Comment down below. I would love to hear opinions about this topic because there are so many questions and many avenues that I can take in order to really pinpoint the problem. I don't think it's possible to pinpoint the problem. Social media at the end of the day is just social media. It shouldn't be that deep. <laughs> We've quite literally made it the center of our lives, including me. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that you will subscribe and stick around for more. Bye!